this week, the wild card Cubs ran into a savvy postseason team. Now, there's slim playoff hopes on the line. The Cubs face elimination as the playoffs return to Wrigley. This is the Sun America NBC pregame show. The 1998 National League Division Series. Tonight, it's game three. The Atlanta Braves versus the Chicago Cubs. 57 degrees on the north side of Chicago as game time approaches for contest number three of this divisional series between the Atlanta Braves and the Chicago Cubs. The Braves looking for the sweep ahead two games to nine. Hi again, everybody. Bob Costas along with Joe Morgan. And the whole story tonight is the pitching pairing. Kerry Wood at 13 and 6 against Greg Maddox, who was 18 and 9. Now, Wood, a rookie of the year candidate, was overpowering almost every time out, but he hasn't pitched in a big league game since August 31st, 32 days without getting a big league start because of strained ligaments in his right elbow. Well, first, Bob, control could be a problem for him because he hasn't pitched, but Beyond that, I don't think he's going to have a problem with his control because he's not trying to locate pitches. His fastball has reached speeds up to 100 miles an hour, so I think he's just going to go out there and throw as hard as he can for as long as he can, and that could work out for the Cubs. Now, some have questioned the wisdom of this decision, starting the rookie tonight, and so Jim Gray talked with the Cubs manager, Jim Riggleman, about that. It's been 32 days since Kerry Wood has pitched. Do you feel as though you may be playing around with his future and risking something that might not be necessary, Jim? No, not at all. Um, you know, uh, we went through the whole process to get him ready to pitch. Um, Kerry um, has been throwing on the side for a long time, and we didn't think that that was uh, near enough test. So we sent him to Arizona to pitch in a ball game out there and get a little more realistic situation that we're dealing with. And, uh, you know, we thought that he would go out there and throw the ball uh, above average but he went out there and he threw the ball uh, you know in the excellent range uh, just with great velocity good slider the whole repertoire so uh, you know we, he's just shown that he's healthy our, our reports on him are so good that we just feel like we're going to pitch him. Jim was this your decision or, or was it the organization's collectively. Well yeah I think collectively you know uh, certainly uh, any decision that we make on player personnel uh, the nature of the way we make our decisions is is a collective situation myself Phil Regan Andy McPhail Ed Lynch uh, Jim Henry Dave Wilder all of us get together and uh, evaluate the talent evaluate the situation uh, get the information from the doctors and uh, uh, you know when there's an injury involved and, and hopefully make the best decision possible. So Kerry Wood makes his first postseason start while Greg Maddox gets the ball in the playoffs or World Series for the 18th time in his career. He was 18 and 9, but had for him a late season slump. He went from 15 and 5 to 18 and 9, and his ERA went from 1.5 to around 2.2, still the best among National League starters. Well, Bob, any pitching coach will tell you the most important element in pitching is location, location, location. And Greg Maddox is the best locator in baseball. He has great movement on his pitches, he changes speeds well. In fact, Bob, he's almost a perfect pitcher. So it's Maddox against Wood. Game three coming up. Back with the lineups from Wrigley Field right after this. This is the Sun America NBC pregame show. Sun America, the retirement specialist. Here's the Atlanta lineup Kerry Wood will face in game three. Chipper Jones had his first hit of the series in game two in the 10th inning. It turned out to be the game winner. Klesko had the grand slam in game one and is hitting 375 for the series. And there you see Kerry Wood, 13 and 6, 3.4 and run average. Overpowering fastball. He throws what some people call a slider, others call it a curveball. But it's a hard breaking ball. And when he has control of it, it's almost impossible to hit him. Thus, he struck out 20 batters in one ball game. And the defense behind him will feature Sammy Sosa in right field. Not only did he have a great season hitting home runs, but outfield assist. He had 14 outfield assists, and his defense really has improved over the last couple of years. He is now an excellent right fielder.
Kerry Wood, as we told you, was 13 and 6, 9 and 1 at Wrigley Field. He had three starts against Atlanta, two no decisions. The Cubs won each of those games. And then on July 21st at Turner Field, he beat Greg Maddox 3 0. He went 7 and 2 thirds, allowed only five hits in that span, and struck out 11. The switch hitting shortstop Walt Weiss to start it. Fastball on the corner. Tyler Houston is catching him tonight. That's popped out of play, and Wood quickly gets ahead 0 and 2. A line drive that almost takes Woods' head off as it whistles into center field for a leadoff hit. And that's interesting right there. I think the Braves feel like that he's just going to come after them with a lot of fastballs. He threw three straight fastballs there. They don't figure he's going to throw a lot of sliders. And there's the fastball line right back through the middle. Woods almost caught it. He just stuck his glove up there and he almost got a piece of it. Walt Weiss has always been a good fastball hitter from the left side. Now Keith Lockhart the second baseman. Ball one. And Lockhart is a good fastball hitter as well. The plate umpire is Gary Darling. Bob Davidson at first. Bruce Freming at second. Angel Hernandez at third. Ed Rapuano on the left field line. And Jeff Kellogg down the right field line. Two and oh. A little different fastballs there. He's put a little sink on the first two pitches here to why I mean to Lockhart trying to get the ground ball called strike and that's the straight fastball the four seamer Weiss edging away from first, held there by Grace. He stole seven and eight attempts this year. Count levels at two and two. The striking difference between these teams, they scored exactly the same number of runs in the regular season. But the Braves allowed more than 200 fewer. The Braves staff ERA more than a run lower than the rest of the league. Way high full count. The Braves have won nine straight games. Two in this series. Last seven of the regular season. In the last four years they're 11 and one. In the first round of the playoffs in the division series. Weiss is running and Lockhart fouls it off. The first year of the division series in 95 the Rockies managed to win a game against the Braves lost the series 3 1 after that they swept the Dodgers the Astros and they're on the verge of doing the same to the Cubs. You see Bobby Cox trying to be aggressive here early in the ballgame. Weiss is running again. Lockhart pops it wide of third. Does Gaetti have room? Near the railing, has it. That brings up Chipper Jones with 313 for the year with 34 home runs. The center fielder Lance Johnson is a step or two toward the left center field side of second base. Which is where he has been for the first two hitters and now Chipper Jones. Which means the Cubs don't think that the left handed hitters can pull wood. Well he, he will if he throws him a slider like that. That was a slider as the first slider is thrown for a strike. Oh 
one, two. And there's another slider. Let's take a look at the way Chipper Jones hits the ball from the left side. He pulls the ball a little bit more than he sprays it from the left side. And what part of the reason is that they pitch him inside a lot because he likes the fastball out over the plate. Fastball misses high and away. 96 on the gun with that one. He's been known to hit triple digits. But I think he, if he feels better, Bobby will work his way towards that. I don't think he's going to come out in the first inning and just let it all go. One two pitch in the air to center. Lance Johnson takes it. That was a changeup. So now maybe he feels a little better about himself out there. He threw a slider and a changeup to Chipper Jones after throwing almost exclusively fastballs to the first two hitters. And you see him grip it a little tighter there. And there's the changeup. Chipper out in front. Beautiful pitch. When a guy throws 96 plus miles an hour and he throws you a good changeup down. You're almost at his mercy. Good pitch there. Now Galarraga, who at age 37 hit 305 with 44 home runs and 121 RBIs. Weiss, who started the game with a single, still at first with two down. The Braves have won seven division titles in a row. They've been to the World Series four times in this decade. Inside. Perhaps there's a comparison to be made to Earl Weaver's Oriole teams of the late 60s and early 70s. Definitely the best team in baseball over that stretch as Bobby Cox's Braves have been in the 90s but only able to win the one World Series and perhaps denied their rightful place in history because of it. The Braves won only in 95 against the Indians lost three of the four World Series in which they played hoping to get to a fifth this year. Wood behind Galarraga three and zero, oh, and walks it. Well, Wood was trying to be very careful with Galarraga, especially after he got behind in the count. Galarraga is a good fastball hitter, especially if you get the ball out over the plate. For a great strikeout pitcher, Wood, only 21 years old, has exceptional control. He struck out 233 and walked 85. In his 20 strikeout game and just his fifth big league start back in May against the Astros, he didn't walk anybody. A called strike to Ryan Plesko. Two on, two out, and the 0-1 pitch. Cut on and missed. It was that game back on May 6th which put Kerry Wood on the map with baseball fans across the country. A one-hitter against the Astros with 20 strikeouts, tying Roger Clemens' big league record for a nine-inning game. The 0-2 to Klesko struck him out to end the first. They leave two, and the Cubs come up in the bottom half. As we take a look at the Chicago lineup, we'll tell you that the wind is blowing directly in from right field at Wrigley tonight. At 18 miles an hour right now, it can sometimes be a tricky wind to gauge in this ballpark. Talk with Ron Santo, the great Cub third baseman of years gone by, now one of their broadcasters. He tells us his best guess is on a night like tonight everything from left center on over to the right field foul pole the hitters will be hurt by the wind but to straight away left not so. So if you hit it down the line as a right handed hitter the wind probably won't knock it down. Maddox is 1 0 pitch to Lance Johnson hit deep to center back goes Andrew Jones he glides back on a ball so beautifully and he takes it on the warning track. Well, a lot of people think he's the best center fielder in baseball. Bobby Cox, his manager, has gone so far as to say he's the best center fielder he's ever seen. 
And he's still learning the position. He's just a young fella. I never saw DiMaggio in person. And I don't want to jump to these sorts of conclusions as Morandini takes one the opposite way for a one-out single. But they used to talk about DiMaggio getting the balls effortlessly. I have seen Andrew Jones track some balls down running a long way and hardly appearing to break a sweat in the process. Well, there's no doubt he's an excellent outfielder. I'm not going to say he's the best I've ever seen. I think that was Willie Mays, but he's a good center fielder. Big reception for Sammy Sosa. Who could be playing his last home game of a remarkable season tonight if the Cubs don't beat Maddox and the Braves. 66 home runs and kind of overlooked in all this. He caught Juan Gonzalez for the major league lead in RBIs with 158. Outside for a ball. They're ready on Waveland. Eddie Perez sets up outside. And it's 2 0 to Sammy. Grace next. The 2 0 pitch. This is down and away. Well, you can see Maddox is trying to be extra careful. To Sammy Sosa. The one thing he doesn't want to do is have Sammy hit one out of here and get the crowd behind this ball club and get them started. If Maddox walks you, it's usually part of his plan. Green light on 3 0, oh, and he doesn't get it. I think it's okay for certain hitters to hit 3 0, oh, but if you're going to hit 3 0, oh, it should be a, pull, a pitch that you can drive. This is a good pitch by Maddox right over the outside corner. And you can see Sosa wanting to pull the ball, really couldn't reach it. Maddox, the consummate control artist, struck out 204, walked 45. Chases Morandini back. Against the Cubs this year, Maddox was one and one, pitched well both times, beat them in May, lost to Kerry Wood at home in July. Morandini runs on the 3-1 pitch, which is hit in the air to right center field, racing over to make the backhand catches Michael Tucker, and Morandini retreats to first. Nice play by Tucker. That ball was hit hard up the gap, and he got over there very quickly. Balls like that will not be affected as much by the wind. That was more of a line drive. The high fly balls will be knocked down by the wind. Tucker cuts across the perfect angle, makes the catch. They've hit three balls well, though, the first three hitters against Maddox. Johnson to the track in left center. Morandini a sharp single to left. And then Sammy whacked that one into right center, caught by Tucker. Here's Grace, hitless in the series. Galarraga takes the force with the flip to Weiss. And that takes care of Grace and the Cubs. No score after one. Game three at Wrigley Field. NBC's coverage of tonight's Division Series game is brought to you by Century by Buick, a luxury car for everyone. By IBM, are you ready for e-business? By Frost Brewed Coors Light, who reminds you the three most important words are, hey, beer man. And by Adidas. As we move to the second, Jones, Perez, and Tucker are due for Atlanta against Kerry Wood. Who allowed a hit and a walk, but no runs in the first. A chilly night, but Wood, the Texan, does not go to the long sleeves. The ball one pitch is high. 
Well, these are two young stars in the game, Bob, and they will have many a confrontations in the next few years. Andrew Jones, very good fastball hitter, so you see Kerry Wood going to two breaking balls. And now he's behind 3 0. Oh. Jim Riggleman says he hopes for somewhere between 90 and 100 pitches from Wood, maybe six innings. Come on back, Andrew. That's a called strike. Well, that's a high strike. It's up at the top of the strike zone. There's the walk. The second issued by Wood. I know you're wondering about the blimp folks. It says here Snoopy an avid baseball fan is co-piloting the MetLife blimp. Look for Snoopy one and Snoopy two at upcoming sporting events throughout the fall. We only hope the Red Baron isn't somewhere else over the skies above Wrigley. Raves with the leadoff man on. Eddie Perez to the plate. Ball is high. When Javi Lopez is your number one, although Perez catches almost every game that Maddox pitches, and you got a guy behind him who can hit 336 with a little bit of pop off the bench, you're deep. In there. A lot of people have made a bigger deal out of the fact that Perez catches Maddox more than Javi Lopez does, but Bobby Cox says it's He's going to give his catcher Javi Lopez one day off every four or five every five games anyway. So that's the game that Perez catches Maddox. One one to Eddie is up high. Perez has caught all but two of Maddox's starts this year. It was Lopez who broke Kevin Tappany's heart. In game two in Atlanta Tappany hurling a masterpiece and out dueling Tom Glavin with one out on the ninth before Lopez took him deep to tie it 1 1 the Braves win it 2 1 in the tenth to take the 2 nothing lead diving back is Andrew Jones and barely making it take a look here nice quick step off and throw by Curry Wood. Andrew Jones leaning the wrong way. But clearly back in time. Two and two to Eddie Perez. A foul ball. Lodges in the crook of Gary, Gary Darling's Darling. arm. Yeah. Woods 2 2 pitch with Jones running. Fouled out of play. I asked Bobby Cox if it was hard to take Javi Lopez out of the ball game after the heroics he had in the second game in Atlanta. And he said, no, this is the way we play. And I think that's one thing that the Braves do. They set up a system and they basically stick with it. And they've done that for the last five or six years and it's worked for them. There is some concern about Kerry Wood. He had what was described as a dead arm at midseason, missed a bit of time, and hasn't pitched in the big leagues since August 31st with the tender elbow. He also had an elbow problem in the minors in 96. Not going on this one, and another foul ball. Take a look at the scouting report on Kerry Woods. Great fastball. And he has a very hard breaking ball and he throws a change up. He's only thrown the change up to the left handed hitters and he got Chipper Jones out on it in the first inning. When you think about flamethrowers Nolan Ryan Sandy Koufax make up your own list through the years. Seldom do they have command early in their careers. Right. They check it first and they punch him out. Bob Davidson says he went around. A disgusted Perez walks off second strikeout for Kerry Wood. Well let's take a look here that's well I can see why 
Perez thought he stopped but this is the view that Bob Davison had at first base still looks like he may have checked his swing Javi I mean <laughs> Eddie wasn't even concerned he thought he clearly checked his swing and some of the Braves thought so as well here's Michael Tucker who had a game one home run Swings and misses started to say about Wood when you look at the strikeout to walk ratio and the variety of pitches he seems to be able to throw for strikes he may be approaching command earlier in his career than a guy like Koufax or Ryan. I don't think there's any doubt I, I've never seen anyone throw as hard as he does and as you mentioned have the control that he has took Ryan several years and Koufax the same thing. You know what he reminds me of truthfully is J.R. Richards. J.R. Richards was a young player that had command of his pitches. He threw like a 90 plus mile an hour slider and an overpowering fastball just like Curry Wood. And he had good control. One on, one out, and the 1-1 one -one pitch. Down low. Wood led the league in strikeouts per inning pitched. 12.6 for every nine innings of work. And as you saw a moment ago on the graphic, he held opposing hitters to a 196 batting average, best of all National League starters. Well hit to left center field. Going back is Rodriguez to track it down at the track. Back to first is Andrew Jones. Let's take a look. The pitch lined in the left center field. Good jump there by Rodriguez. He gets back there and makes the catch. What they did is they threw the ball back into the infield and they tagged second base. And it comes into a turns into a double play. We've got a break for a commercial. When we come back, we'll look at it again and explain how Andrew Jones was erased on the bases. We'll take a look at the Andrew Jones base running play in a moment as Henry Rodriguez leads off. It's a 7 6 4 double play because they said he didn't retouch second, retreating. Well hit to left. Back goes Klesko. And this ball is off the Ivy. Rodriguez on his way to second with a leadoff double. Well, that shows you what the win can do. That ball played havoc out there with Klesko. It started over his left shoulder, and by the time he looked back, it was over his right shoulder. Fastball away from Rodriguez, and he drilled it. On a normal night, that ball is gone. Fastball, and he drills it to left field. Now watch, it's over his right shoulder, and now watch where he ends up. Turns back around. I mean, that ball, I mean, the wind blew that ball all over the place out there. And that's what you were saying, Bob, about how you can't tell. All right, let's take a look at the play that ended the inning. It appeared to me that Andrew Jones did touch the bag going back. Once you pass the bag, you have to tag the bag going back after the guy makes the catch. Watch his left foot right there. Right there, up against the bag. But they said he didn't touch the bag. See, he says he did. They said he didn't. They had an appeal play at second base, and they called him out. Now Maddox is walking into the Brave dugout. They were showering the field with O'Henry bars, which they usually do only after our Rodriguez home run, but maybe in the playoffs a double is good enough. <laughs> so now they have to clear the debris Man. away. And Maddox, rather than loitering around the mound, decides he'd rather get into the warmth of the Atlanta dugout. not pleased with the fact that his rhythm was interrupted and that's one thing about Greg Maddox he is a rhythm type pitcher he likes to work quickly a battalion of stadium workers picking up the O'Henry bars this gives us a chance to tell you that the sporting news has joined team NBC 
For in-depth sports coverage online, you can go inside baseball's postseason at msnbcsports.com. Braves rookie closer Kerry Leitenberg is in tonight's spotlight as he experiences the intense pressure of the playoffs for the first time. The Sporting News, now part of the team at msnbcsports.com. Actually, he worked in the playoffs last year, but this is the first time he's been designated as their closer, but with the troubles Mark Wohler's experienced this year. Henry enjoying the fans' adulation. Opposite field double to begin the Cubs second against Maddox. Well, they cleaned up left field. I guess they don't care as much about right field. Still plenty of debris out there. Michael Tucker will have to sidestep the O'Henry bars if one has hit his way. Now Gary Gaetti. What a pickup. From the Cardinals late in the year, 320 for the Cubs with eight home runs. Called strike one. His postseason career dates back to his days with the Twins. One and one. Gaetti is hitless through the first two games of the series, and he struck out four times. Still a clutch performer at age 40. He pokes the 1 1 pitch towards second base, and Lockhart throws him out, but he gets the job done, moving Rodriguez to third with one out. Great job there by Gaetti just to give himself up, just kind of flip the bat at the ball because he knew Maddox wasn't going to give in to him, and he kept throwing it on the outside corner, and he just flips it over there. Watch this pitch is away from him and he just reaches out and it's a little ground ball to second base. That is really sacrificing yourself to get the runner over to third base but that's what you should do. Now it's up to Tyler Houston to make sure that he picks him up and put the, puts the ball in play. Infield moves in and a strike on the inside corner to Houston. Because Rodriguez has had ankle problems, he doesn't run as well as he did earlier in the year. You do not have to play all the way in. They're not playing, they're playing like halfway to be able to come to the plate. Foul back, 0 and 2. We asked Bobby Cox about Maddox's late season slump he said it's just a slump for him for him three runs is a bad game a big chopper Rodriguez is going to hold Galarraga now shovels it over to Lockhart who gets to first base to cover from second in time to retire Houston indecision playing it safe you can't do that especially when you're down two, two games to none I mean this is a high chop I mean there's no way Galarraga would have had a play at the plate Good work there by Galarraga and Lockhart. Lockhart goes over to cover. Maddox didn't break off the mound. Lockhart covers, but he gets his foot stepped on by Tyler Houston. That's one of those situations where I think you just have to go. But it would have been easy. He would have made it easily if he'd have started right away. You have to take your chances, especially against the likes of Maddox. Here's Hernandez who in 11 career at bats against Maddox has three hits and two of them are home runs. Bob, I've always said that if you just match your pitching staff up against the Atlanta Braves top pitcher, you're going to lose. So you have to help your pitching staff out by putting pressure on the Braves. Make something happen. Maddox led National League starters in ERA and with Smoltz and Glavin they had three of the top six. You've got to run the bases well. You've got to steal bases. You've got to hit and run. You've got to do a lot of things with Maddox on the mound. 
one and two. Well, that looks like almost a perfect picture there, doesn't it? Two and that is two, with, two. as we said, that is with a relative slump in the last month of the season. Be a dream year for almost anybody else. Called strike three. The Cubs threaten, but Rodriguez, who was at third with one out, stays there. We move to the third, and Maddox is the leadoff man against Wood. He is, as you know, a good hitting pitcher. He hit 240 this year. In addition to everything else they do well, the Braves' starting pitchers are good hitters. Smoltz, Glavin, Maddox, they can all help themselves. Bob, I just made a major faux pas. What was that? My scorecard blew out into the stands. <laughs> I can't believe it. The, wi the wind just grabbed it. And so the question now is, it's just like a Sosa or McGuire home run ball. Does the fan <laughs> believe that it belongs to you, and does he give it up out of a sense of duty, or does he sell it to the highest bidder? Well, I saw the young lady. She pointed that she was going to bring it up. <laughs> two and two. Now we'll see what she asks in return. <laughs> Maddox whacks one toward left center field. Johnson on the run, can't get there. Can he hold him to a single? Maddox is thinking double, running hard. In there. Has to hold on to the bag for dear life as he almost overslid it. Then he asked for time. What a good athlete he is. He is a good athlete, but like you mentioned, and all the Braves pitchers are pretty good hitters. Fastball, that ball was in a little bit, and Maddox was able to find center field. They had him shaded around the right center. And he hustles in. Watch this slide. That's a fadeaway slide there by Maddox, and he's safe at second base. Now Walt Weiss, who's single to start the game. The Braves have put their leadoff man on. All three turns at bat against Wood. Maddox at second with a leadoff double. Gaetti inching in at third. Weiss looks to bunt and fouls it off. And one of the difficult things to do against a hard thrower is to bunt the ball and direct it where you want. And in most cases, if you're trying to keep a guy from bunting and you throw hard like Wood does, you throw the high fastball. You may get him to pop it up. Checks Maddox and brings it home on 0 and 1. Strike two as Weiss can't get it down. Just as hard to bunt it as it is to hit it sometimes. You've got to get the barrel out front and wait and then just play catch. Well, he doesn't have a lot of bunting space there, and you can see he's swinging at it and pushing at it. You can't do that. He may have a better chance of trying to pull it on the ground. Line back to Wood. And Maddox scampers back to second. Good base running there by Greg Maddox at second base. Wood throws the fastball. Wise trying to pull it. Lines it back to Wood. And he immediately looks at second base. But Maddox, good base running, does not venture off too far. Now he'll face Keith Lockhart, who fouled out in the first. They've got a pretty good scouting report on the Braves. I'm watching how they're pitching their hitters. Certain guys on this, Lockhart, Wise, Andrew Jones, real good fastball hitters. They're starting them off and throwing them a lot of breaking balls when they can stay ahead in the count. Grace will take it himself. Maddox to third, but with two out. And that was another breaking ball. Slider down. So 
So now it's up to Chipper Jones. Who flied the center in the first. He made some great pitches on Chipper in the first and a couple of breaking balls in under the hands then got him out with a change up down and away. Fastball inside. It remains true of Chipper Jones that almost all of his power is from the left side. He got the game winning hit in game two right handed. But 32 of his 34 home runs were hit lefty this year. A ball and a strike. This next pitch will be Woods 50th. As we mentioned Jim Riggleman has him slated if all goes well for somewhere between 90 and 100. Down low two and one. No score top of the third. Maddox at third with two out. Got the corner. It's a good hard slider off on the inside corner. Starts in the middle of the plate and jumps at him. It started right in the middle of the plate and then just broke sharply in. This one gets away from Houston and coming to the plate is Maddox for the game's first run. Well, we'll have to see how that was scored. I thought Houston should have been able to block the ball, but we'll. Comes with another slider, and that ball there is in the air. That is definitely a pass ball. The ball was off of Houston's right kneecap. Watch, it'll be right at his right kneecap, and he should catch that ball. It's right off the end of the glove for a pass ball. And it is scored as a pass ball. And now Jones whacks one into center field. It falls for a hit. Well, they've thrown Chipper so many off speed pitches, he finally just cuts down on his swing and flips one in the center field for a base hit. You can talk all you want about the merits, whatever they may be, of the designated hitter rule. And people are there are, merits? Uh, not many. And people who are too bored with baseball to put up with watching a pitcher bat. But when you have a pitcher who can help himself, like Maddox, and Wood is a good hitting pitcher. But when you have to think about pinch hitting or do you sacrifice or not, it adds texture to the game. Maddox came through with a double and with good base running managed to help himself and take the lead here in the third inning. And you mentioned the entire Braves starting rotation. They work at their hitting they work at their base running they work at their sacrifice they're just good athletes. Here is the big merit of the designated hitter rule. OK. Especially when it first came in it allowed guys like Kaline Oliva people like that to stick around longer fan favorites and there are some guys Eddie Murray was an example able to prolong their careers but you don't need it for extra offense anymore as they did in the early 70s because offense has exploded all around baseball. Galarraga fouls it away. Well to be honest with you, I don't think there's any doubt that the designated hitter really helped the American League you know when they implemented it because it did keep some of the stars around and I think it added some more excitement to the game and they've scored more runs in the American League than the National League because of it. But it really takes the strategy away a lot of it makes the game less interesting overall. One two pitch to the big cat misses. Since Chipper Jones followed Tyler Houston's pass ball with a base hit it makes the runoff wood earn in this inning had he retired Jones the run would have been unearned because of the pass ball. That's one of the theories of baseball I don't like. They check it first. They say he didn't go full count. With Maddox at third they may have made a different pitch. A lot of things could have happened differently. And you can see that Galarraga checks his swing. The runner goes and a swing and a miss. 
finishing Galarraga. And the Atlanta third. Third strikeout for Wood, but he's behind Maddox, one zip. In the old scoreboard atop the bleachers in dead center field. They put up the one for the Atlanta Braves in the top half of the third. Kerry Wood starts it against Maddox and takes a strike. This is not the oldest ballpark in the majors. Fenway and Tiger Stadium are each older. Wood. It's it to Lockhart who throws him out and we throw it to Jim Gray. All right. Thank you very much Bob. I'm now joined by the commissioner of baseball Bud Selig. Bud you have now presided over a great baseball season. Has there been a better season than 1998 in your opinion. Well you know a lot of people are convinced of that and Jim other than the summer of 49 which I have a great historical fondness. I, I believe this may have been the greatest year in baseball history. It has been so remarkable in so many ways. What stands out is that the Yankees and all their victories in the American League Mark McGuire Sammy Sosa what one moment if you can pick one stands out this year for you. Well there are a lot of things and you've just named them but the Mark McGuire Sammy Sosa situation and being in St. Louis when when he hit the 60 second home run given the sense of history and everything else is it's one of those moments that uh, those of us there and I'm sure those that watched will never forget. Lance Johnson just tagged out Mickey Morandini now at the plate. Let me ask you about Sammy Sosa. He gets 66 home runs and he's not going to be in the record book. Is there any special thing that you might do as commissioner Bud to commemorate his achievement as well as McGuire's. Well he'll be in the record book obviously only because he passed Babe Ruth and Roger Maris's record. But yes we do have big plans uh, frankly during the World Series to honor both of them in a very unique and a very special way. And Sammy deserves all the credit in the world. All right Bud we appreciate your time. We look forward to chatting with you throughout the American League Championship Series as we head to the Braves at the top half of the inning. The Braves hit one nothing. Night baseball in the postseason at Wrigley Field. Ryan Klesko starts it off. He struck out against Wood his first time up. An off season in terms of power for Klesko. He hit just 18 home runs. But he had the game one grand slam in this series. 2 0. Oh. Through the first three innings, Wood threw 59 pitches. Maddox, who is not only excellent but economical, needed just 25 to work the first three. 3 and 0. Oh. That one's in there. Ryan Quesco likes the ball down and out over the plate. His long swing could be a problem against Wood. Can't catch up with a 3 1 pitch, full count. And if you can't hit the 3 1 fastball, you definitely. You know, have problems sometimes when you get behind the count two strike. But he has a little longer swing, and he seems like he swings a little harder than he should against Wood. Left field, Rodriguez toward the line, into the corner, fair ball, and he's got it. Right up against the 355 sign. Right, when a guy throws as hard as Kerry Wood does, you don't swing harder, you just swing quicker. You have to get the bat through the hitting zone quicker not harder. That was a good pitch there by Kerry Wood and good actually a good swing by Klesko to do as much as he did with it. Without the wind that ball might have gone out. So he thought he hit it well enough to get it out. It was a pitch moving down and away and he went out there and got it. Andrew Jones walked his first time and Gaetti can't handle it. Big turn by Jones and now he returns to first. Let's see how they score it. Took a tough hop on Gary. Was well, a breaking ball. He was out in front of it and I think that's what fooled him. The speed he thought it was hit harder than it was because he had a chance to move one step forward and he did not move. But he thought it was hit harder. E5. Jones at first with one out for Eddie Perez. Who struck out in the second? One nothing Atlanta as they bat in the fourth.
trying to sweep the divisional series for the third straight year. Inside ball one. Michael Tucker will be next. A lot of people think of Eddie Perez as Greg Maddox's personal catcher, and we've seen over the years a lot of catchers who catch certain pitchers, and people wonder why. There he goes. And Houston can't come up with it, so he can't make a throw. Andrew Jones steals second base. Well, he actually had a real good jump. So he takes off the moment Kerry Wood makes his first move. And even with a good throw, I don't think they were going to get Andrew Jones. And Houston trying to rush his throw. Now the 2-0 pitch to Perez. Runs inside 3 and 0. And Bob, the reason you like a catcher, certain catchers like to work with certain pitchers and vice versa, is because they think alike. Their patterns are similar. And a pitcher doesn't like to have to shake a, a catcher off a lot because it gives a hitter a chance to understand what is coming. 3 0 pitch in for a strike. There's Javi Lopez. Game two hero. Along with Glavin who pitched well and Chipper Jones who knocked home the game winner. Full count now. And Bobby Cox was quick to point out to me that. Some of Greg Maddox's greatest games earlier. Were caught by Javi Lopez. So he knows that they can work together. It's just that Maddox prefers Perez. Jones at second with one out and the 3-2 pitch got him. That's four for Kerry Wood. And coming up tomorrow night. Sunday at 8, 7 Central, Jessica Lang, Liam Neeson. His courage led a nation to freedom. I will have justice. Rob Roy, NBC Sunday. That's the network premiere of Rob Roy tomorrow. They're going to walk Michael Tucker intentionally with first base open and take their chances with Maddox. More and more managers have a tendency to pitch to the eighth place hitter and try to get the pitcher to start off the next inning but it cost them in Atlanta in this situation Tucker hit a two run homer so well, now they've learned their lesson and they've decided that they're not going to mess with him in this situation again Maddox doubled and scored in the third helps himself with the bat and with the glove he's won eight consecutive gold gloves as the best fielding pitcher in the league strike one as good as Curry Woods is and athletic as he is it'd be tough for him to win gold gloves because he's the power pitcher and power pitchers fall off the mound and they're not in great fielding position after they throw the baseball. Owen oh 2. I'm reminded of Bob Gibson when you say that the way he used to fall off the mound but he was such a good athlete he fielded his position well in spite of it. Well, good point. He was a rare exception. Here's the 0-2. And he makes quick work of Maddox to get out of the inning with his fifth strikeout. 
to the bottom of the fourth. One nothing Braves. NBC's coverage of tonight's Division Series game is brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. By Gatorade Thirst Quencher. You either have it in you or you don't. Life is a sport. Drink it up. By Claritin. And by Sun America, the retirement specialist. Maddox will face the three, four, and five hitters in the Chicago Ford, beginning with Sosa. Low and away for ball one. Sammy lined to right his first time up. They congregate on Waveland. Sammy doesn't get it. One and one. Well, Sammy, just a little impatient here. I mean, that pitch is way out of the strike zone. There's no way you can hit that. One of the things that he has accomplished this year is that he had become more patient. The other thing he did, he moved off the plate and lowered his bat, which he says lets him view the ball better, gives him a better view of the pitch. And that's one of the reasons he felt he could see the ball better this year. One and two. But if Greg Maddox finds a weakness, he will exploit it. And you see, neither of these two pitches have been strikes. Well, look where Perez sets up. Sets, yeah. <laughs> sets up as a ball. <laughs> Not yet. He may shift over as Maddox gets ready. There he goes. Bounces that one up there, two and two. One of the keys with Maddox isn't just his great location, but the late movement he has on his pitches. It seems like his pitches almost slide off your bat. Well, that's, that's, that's a good term to use and think about in the future. Full count. Well, it seems like they're there, and then all of a sudden they do move. Well, you see. Perez set up outside. The payoff pitch gets him. It was a foul tip back into Perez's glove. And he got Sammy to swing at what might have been ball four. Well, let's take a look at these pitches. First one was a ball. That was a ball. This is a ball. Another ball. He does not throw a strike in this at bat to Sammy. Now watch, this is ball four. If it's Greg ball Maddox, one if he finds out you will swing at pitches out of the strike zone, he will continue to throw them out of the strike zone. Sammy probably figured that was about as close to a strike as he was <laughs> going to get from Maddox. So he wailed away. Big cut and a miss from Grace. That's the Greg Maddox changeup. That's the most feared pitch for a left-handed hitter from Greg Maddox. Grace and Maddox were, of course, Chicago Cub teammates for many years. Played together on the 89 NL East winners. Two and two. The first of Maddox's 18 postseason starts was for the Cubs against the Giants, and he was bombed here at Wrigley Field 11 to 3. Things have gotten better for him since. He won the first of his four Cy Young Awards wearing a Cub uniform in 92. Center field, Jones. That's the second out. The MetLife blimp, Snoopy One, is providing a bird's eye view of tonight's playoff action. Look to the skies for Snoopy and the MetLife blimp. Now, in truth, if you do that all around the country, only a very few of you will actually see it. I'm guessing they don't have one over every city and town in America, so you might be wasting your time. <laughs> don't take that advice literally. Here's Rodriguez, who had a double his first time up. A 
broken bat and a pop back of short coming in from left field is Klesko and Maddox slices through the heart of the Chicago order in the fourth. They go down one, two, three, and still trail it one nothing. Folks, the American League Championship Series is now set. The Indians eliminated the Red Sox today at Fenway Park. So it's the Tribe against the Yankees beginning at Yankee Stadium Tuesday night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on NBC. Kerry Wood back to work as we move to the fifth. Walt Weiss is singled and lined back to the box. One and one. Wood is right on his usual strikeout pace. He spanned five through the first four innings. The latest of the Texas born strikeout kings, joining Roger Clemens and Nolan Ryan. Here's his 2 2 pitch to Weiss. Fouled away. As a 14 year old, Kerry Wood attended. The seventh and last no hitter of Nolan Ryan's career. Ryan was pitching for the Texas Rangers against the Blue Jays that night in 1991. Full count. And he's kind of a humble individual, Bob, and that when people started comparing him to Nolan Ryan and Roger Clemens, you know, he said, hey, it's too early and I don't want to hear talk like that. Wrapped to first, it comes up for Grace. He takes it himself. Bob, what happened to Kerry Wood this year often happens to a lot of young pitchers. They pitch in the minor leagues and they're on a pitch count. They pitch six innings, five innings. Then they get to the big leagues and they start to become a starter every fifth day. And when they get up around 150 innings, they, their arms usually get tired or they get an injury. They develop soreness. And that has happened to a lot of young pitchers. And they're usually able to overcome it as their arms get stronger. A ball and a strike to Lockhart, who's 0 for 2. But they have him on such a strict pitch count when you're in the minor league. You do not pitch much, you know, many innings. And then you get here and you're pitching tons of innings and it just catches up with you. Braves have three hits off Wood. Cubs have managed two against Maddox. One nothing Atlanta. Three balls and a strike. Nobody up yet in the Chicago bullpen. Wood is at 90 pitches right now. His 91st is popped into left. And it's Rodriguez there to take it. Here's the latest information on Daryl Strawberry. He underwent five hours of surgery today in New York. They removed a portion of his upper intestine. They say they found no evidence of the spread of cancer. They removed the malignant tumor. He is resting comfortably right now. And that's great news. With two out and nobody on, here's Chipper Jones. He's flied out and single. Well, if they let Kerry Wood work the sixth inning, he'll go past 100 pitches. He's in the low 90s right now. Well, part of the plan for today was to see how he was feeling after he got to a certain point. And I guess 
Jim Riggleman will ask him how he feels when he comes in and there's Phil Regan the pitching coach. They will ask him how he feels if he gets out of this inning. And decide whether they're going to send him out there again. For the seventh inning they're starting to stir now in the cup bullpen. And on four pitches Jones draws a two out walk. Wood is scheduled to be the fourth hitter. In the bottom half of the fifth. And one thing I've noticed is when he as you see Heredia Felix Heredia starts to throw in the Cubs bullpen. But the one thing I've noticed about him he's a very smart pitcher in that if he falls behind he fell behind Chipper Jones in and he decided he wasn't going to give in. He fell behind Andres Galarraga in the first inning and he didn't give in. I think he's trying to make sure that he keeps his team in the ball game. He's not going to throw any three one pitches that these sluggers can hit out of the ballpark. Riggleman out to talk with him and this is just a talk. Haredi has only been throwing for a few seconds and you're not going to bring in a left hander here to face Galarraga. Five strikeouts. He got one in the first, one in the second, one in the third, and he got two in the fourth. He's walked four, one of them intentionally. Galarraga has one of each. Walked in the first, struck out in the third. He has a definite game plan with Galarraga. He's trying to throw the fastball on the inside corner and then try to get ahead so he'll chase the breaking ball. He struck him out with a 3 2 breaking ball in the third inning. The 1 0. A towering fly ball into left center field. Coming in is Johnson, and Lance Johnson makes the catch. No runs, no hits, a walk, a man is left. To the bottom of the fifth in Chicago, one nothing Atlanta. Gaetti, Houston, and Hernandez in the bottom of the fifth. If anybody gets on, the pitcher's spot would be due. Terry Mulholland is throwing now in the Chicago bullpen. Strike one. Heredia was up earlier. I believe what Riggleman was thinking was that if Galarraga had reached, he would have brought in the left-hander Heredia to try to get Klesko out. And that would have been Heredia's only batter if everything went according to plan. If they got a man on, they would have hit for Heredia in the bottom half, then brought in Mulholland, who is better suited to work a longer stretch. Now we'll see what happens if Wood's turn comes up in this inning. Two and one to Gaetti. That'll make the seats. And let's take a look at the way that Gary Gaetti sprays his hits around the field. That 57 to left, which basically says that he's pretty much a pull hitter. But part of that is because they throw him a lot of breaking balls, so he has to pull the ball. It gets through Maddox and into center field. A leadoff single for Gaetti. And Maddox has stayed away from Gaetti this entire ball game. This is a pitch out away and Gaetti reaches out and hits it right back through the middle. He didn't try to pull it just went right back through the middle with it. Here's the catcher Tyler Houston.
45 year old Jim Riggleman. Never got higher than AAA as a ball player, primarily a third baseman. Houston rolls it foul. Asked Riggleman before the game about his greatest influences. George Kissel, who's something of a guru for years and years, decades, really, in the Cardinal organization. He said influenced him greatly. And Whitey Herzog, he coached for Whitey sometime back in St. Louis. Houston has to skip away from it one and one. Riggleman said he never saw anybody who ran a ball game in a shrewder fashion than Whitey Herzog. People have always thought of Whitey as being very crafty. 1-1 one, one pitch from Maddox to Houston. Earl Weaver was always a proponent of pitching defense and a three-run homer. And Whitey Herzog always liked to use pitching and speed and defense to win his ball games. He, all, he used to say speed never has a slump. Different teams, too, that usually played on turf. The right. Royals in Kansas City and the Cardinals before they put the grass back in in St. Louis. Inside, two and two. And Maddox wanted that pitch. He thought he had the inside corner on Tyler Houston. It just hit the outside corner and he tried to go back inside. It looked like Maddox was a lock for his fifth Cy Young Award until late in the year when he faltered just a bit. He strikes Houston out. Now most folks are thinking that Trevor Hoffman, who had a great year out of the San Diego bullpen, will take the Cy Young Award in the National League. Let's take a look at how Eddie Perez sets up behind the plate. Look at this pitch. Here's the first pitch to Tyler Houston. And now here's the second pitch. He's on the inside corner. Back out. Back in. And this is the way Greg Maddox pitches. And very few pitchers can do that. Use just the corner of the plate. Bob, I'll have to discuss that Cy Young Award with you. Here's Hernandez. I, I agree that Trevor Hoffman has had a fantastic season. But I believe that the Cy Young Award is meant for a starting pitcher who pitches 200, 300 innings, I mean 200 plus innings to go out. Whereas you have Trevor Hoffman pitching about 70 innings the entire season and he goes out and saves the ball game. And true, I mean, like I say, it's had a fantastic year. I'm not taking that away from it. I think the Fireman Award is for mm -hmm. Fireman. I think the Cy Young Award is for starting pitchers. And I don't believe starting pitchers should be most valuable players in the league. I think there I think there are awards for everyone and those awards should be awarded accordingly. I mean I can't you take a guy like Greg Maddox or Glavin or Kevin Brown who go out there and pitch two hundred and you know fifty innings the entire season. You know to me that's what the Cy Young Award is all about. Kerry Wood is done. Grant Brown is in the on deck circle. He'll be the pinch hitter. At the very least, if you don't say that a pitcher can't be, there's Brown, the pitcher can't be the MVP or a relief pitcher can't be the Cy Young, then the thinking ought to be, unless there right. is no outstanding candidate among everyday players or yeah. among starting pitchers, all things being equal, you go with the everyday player right. for the MVP over a pitcher and for the starting pitcher for the Cy Young over a reliever. Correct. But I and I can understand why Trevor Hoffman is getting a lot of you know play and, and he may win. He's had a fantastic season. Cute little move there by <laughs> Greg Maddox wasn't it. <laughs> Few fans hollering for a balk but they get no satisfaction because it wasn't. He stepped off with his back foot first. Hernandez struck out his first time up. Lines this one foul and sends them scattering in the Atlanta bullpen. Starting to bother me a little bit though, Bob. We're agreeing on too many things here. I don't know, you know? 
That is cause for alarm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> On your part, not mine. <laughs> On both of our parts. <laughs> That's out of play. We're in the bottom of the fifth. Kerry Wood pitched well. Right now he trails Maddox 1-0. This went almost exactly according to plan for Wood, Riggleman, and the Cubs. And had not Tyler Houston been guilty of a pass ball, we might be in a scoreless duel right now. Or Rodriguez had a, you know, broken for the plate on that chopper. They may be ahead one to nothing. So they made two mistakes that have hurt them. Another foul out of play. Kerry Wood worked five innings. He threw 97 pitches. Allowed one run, three hits, walked four, struck out five. And everyone in Chicago can breathe a sigh of relief knowing that the young fellow is healthy again. Now when it comes to rookie of the year, right, there is no distinction between pitchers and everyday players. So what do you think? Wood of the Cubs or Helton of the Rockies? I think that's another toss-up. I think that's that's a difficult one as well because I can't get you to commit here. No, I mean I, if, look, you're always gonna get me to kind of side with the hitter. Because I think hitting is the hardest thing to do in any sport. I mean, hitting a baseball. The 2 2. A bouncing ball toward the hole and through. Gaetti to second base and no further than that. So singles by Gaetti and Hernandez set the stage for Brant Brown. Well, this is good hitting here by Hernandez. He goes behind the runner, well, right in front of Gaetti, but he hits to the right side and he finds the hole over there. Big hole on the right side. And I think Greg Maddox and Perez started to talk there because I think they were a little out of sync there. I think Maddox may have wanted to come inside and Perez wanted to go away. And then going away, that ball was hitting the hole to right field. So they had a little quick discussion at the mound. Now here's Brant Brown hit 291 with 14 homers for the year. Foul back pretty good pinch hitter. Six for 21 that's 286 coming off the bench. And Bob when the Cubs beat the Giants last Monday to get into the playoffs Brown said he was the happiest guy in the whole world. He was happier than any Cub fan any Cub anyone. He said I'm the happiest The drop fly ball in Milwaukee as it turned out didn't matter. At least when it was all over it hung over their heads for a week though and you have to give them a lot of credit. I mean they they were able to hang on and get into a playoff with the Giants and beat them here in Wrigley Field. That could have been just devastating. They could have lost five or six in a row as the Mets did down the stretch. Gaetti at second Hernandez at first. Oh and to the count to Brown. Hit toward short. Weiss to Lockhart. They get one and nothing more than that. Hernandez coming in hard. First and third now with two out. Well, the ball was hit off the end of the bat first, and then Weiss did not give him a real good toss, and Lockhart waited at the bag for the ball. So you see it hit off the end of the bat. Now Weiss's toss draws him inside. See, that ball is too far inside. If it was straight at him, then Lockhart could have come across the bag and avoided the runner. That's also what Maddox does to you. He gets ahead of you 0-2, then he forces you to protect the plate and just kind of poke at a pitch like that that you can't do much with. It's up to Lance Johnson. He's fly to deep center and was out trying to drag a bunt for a hit. Lance hit 280 for the season. Bob, in this day and age when 
Everyone used a thin handle bat and 31 or 32 ounces and tries to get the ball in the air. Lance Johnson is just the opposite. He's kind of a throwback. He uses a 40 ounce bat and he swings it from the end. High two and one. Bobby Cox, he says he never gets relaxed until the season is over, and hopefully they've won something. Just off the corner. Well, anytime you see Greg Maddox walk down towards the plate like that, he thinks that he got part of the plate, but let's take a look at Perez. He reaches out and catches it and pulls it in. That's the ball. Now the 3 1 in there. So Brown will be running off of first. Gaetti is at third. Two out, bottom of the fifth. 1 0 Atlanta. And a 3 2 pitch coming from Maddox to Lance Johnson. In the air to right, Michael Tucker almost in his tracks. They leave two. And Maddox holds on to his 1-0 lead through five. Terry Mulholland on now to start the sixth. In relief of Kerry Wood, first man to face him, Ryan Klesko, who struck out and flied out against Wood. Mulholland has been ever available to Jim Riggleman down the stretch. Used out of the bullpen, used as a starter. Through 121 pitches on Sunday at the end of the regular season against Houston, then came back and got them an out in the Monday wildcard playoff game here at Wrigley against the Giants. Down the stretch, it seemed pretty apparent that Jim Riggleman had a lot of confidence in Mulholland and Beck but not a lot of the uh, in, a, in the other people in the bullpen two and two to Klesko Mulholland is 35 he was six and five this year his ERA was under three former Mariner giant Philly Full count. But it was 3 0 as a starter down the stretch for the Cubs. And that was where he was successful. He's always had good control. Here's the payoff pitch. And he strikes Klesko out. Foul tip back into Houston's glove. Let's take a look at tomorrow's baseball schedule. Well, it's confusing, isn't it? Well, if the, if, the, if I guess it all depends on this ball game. Yes, if, it does. If the Cubs win, then there will be a game on Fox and a game on ESPN. If the Cubs lose, only a game on Fox, and it'll be the Astros and the Padres. Correct. Ball one to Andrew Jones. Skies one to center. Lance Johnson has it lined up. Two outs in the Atlanta sixth. We know for sure where we'll be on Tuesday night at Yankee Stadium. Game one. Indians and Yankees. In the ALCS. It's a lot less confusing when we move to the league championship <laughs> yes. series. All the National League games this year are on Fox. And all the American League games are on NBC. Correct. So we have the Yankees and the Indians. Indians went up to Boston and won two ball games. Trailing one nothing. 
on the Nomar Garcia para home run. They came back to beat the Red Sox today and avoid meeting Pedro Martinez in a game five. Good breaking ball from Terry Mulholland. Gaetti backs up at third, fires across the diamond, takes care of Eddie Perez, and Mulholland works a one, two, three, six. Maddox back to work in the bottom of the six. Mickey Morandini to face him. Strike one. New left fielder. Fresco out. And Danny Bautista in for defense. Back to the mound. Maddox throws Morandini out. That brings up Sosa who's lined out and struck out and is two for nine in the series so far. Well he went the other way in the first inning he hit the ball hard but the wind held it up and Michael Tucker ran it down in right center field. Then he tried to go that way again but he strikes out on a great pitch from Greg Maddox. The Braves also have a new right fielder Gerald Williams is in right field. He'll bat fifth Bautista the new left fielder will hit eighth. Ball one to Sammy. It's sharply to short. Weiss throws him out. And Sammy's 0 for 3. Well, Greg did not get that pitch where he wanted. That ball was up and over the middle of the plate. Sammy hit it hard, but he hit it right at the shortstop. Now watch where the catcher sets up. See, he's set up outside, and watch where this pitch is. Moves right back into the middle of the plate and up. And Greg is kind of lucky he got that one back. Mark Grace. Still looking for his first hit of the series. 0 for 10 now. Grounded out and flied out in this game against Maddox. One and one. Mark hit 309 for the year with 17 homers and 89 RBIs. Right center field, well hit. Gerald Williams on the run, gets there. That is a strong wind out there right now, Bob. Yeah, he hit that ball pretty well. Gerald Williams just inserted for defense, ran it down. one nothing after six. Danny Bautista. Inserted into the eighth spot on the lineup when he took over in left field for Ryan Klesko. Swings at Mulholland's first pitch. Sends it back to the mound. And Terry throws him out. Let's go back to the last out. In the bottom half of the sixth, Mark Gray still can't buy a hit. Well, when you're struggling, Bob, everything goes against you. This is a good pitch by Greg Maddox, but Mark Gray stays with it and rips it to right center field. Gerald Williams just inserted for defense, makes a fine running catch. And you can see the frustrations of... Mark Gracie says hey I hit the ball hard they catch it and that's what happens that's how you get a 0 for 10 or 12 in a series when you're actually not swinging the bat that badly. Mark Grace who waited nine years to return to the postseason now 0 for 11 in this series he was 11 for 17 in the 89 LCS against the Giants that's 647. 0 and 2 to Maddox who doubled and struck out against Wood. He scored the game's only run. Coming home on a pass ball by Tyler Houston. That was in the third. Mulholland on in relief. He was the game two loser. After a great effort from Kevin Tappany went for naught. Bounced over the bag at first. Grace dives to come up with it and beats Maddox to the bag. Well, his lack of hitting has not hurt his defense. Nice play there by Mark Grace. 
You can see how far he has to go for this ball. Maddox hits it right down the line. Grace playing off the line. Hustles over, picks it up. And he says, you get me out, I get you out. So now Walt Weiss turns around and bats right-handed against Mulholland. He's one for three, had a first inning single. Strike one. Holland up on the count 0 and 2. Good off speed pitch from Mulholland. He's throwing the fastball. He's got good velocity with his fastball. Throws him a curveball. Weiss fouls it off and hangs in. Rodriguez, Gaetti, and Houston are the scheduled hitters in the bottom of the seventh. Scotty Pippen is the designated take me out to the ball game <laughs> singer tonight. When they get up for the seventh inning stretch. Scotty fully outfitted for baseball. Don't know what uniform he'll be wearing when he gets back to his real line of work. Called strike three. So Mulholland has done his job trying to keep it close. He's retired all six hitters he's faced. Scotty Pittman has done his part, and now Rodriguez takes ball one as we move to the bottom of the seventh. Harry Carey glasses fashioned here at Wrigley Field. A ball and a strike to Henry. Harry remembered fondly throughout baseball but especially here in Chicago and also in St. Louis where for so long he and Jack Buck formed one of the greatest broadcast teams ever announcing the Cardinal games two Hall of Famer one and two Rodriguez has doubled and flied the left. He's gone to the opposite field both times. This time he bounces it to first. Galarraga shovels over to Maddox for the first out in the Chicago 7. And coming to NBC a week from tomorrow. Sometimes getting away with murder is worse than getting caught. Dostoevsky's timeless classic comes to NBC. Crime and Punishment one week from Sunday. That's Crime and Punishment on NBC next Sunday. Rod Beck is up. Riggleman's not going to hold anybody back tonight. Steve Traxel will be the starter in game four if they make it that far. And John Smoltz, the game one winner, would come back for Bobby Cox's Braves. A pop up back of the plate Eddie Perez over near the railing to take it. Good play by Perez. Actually it's not a railing it's a brick wall. Yeah and, and Eddie will be the first to tell you because he <laughs> ran into it and he hurt his left arm a little bit but he gauged it properly but right there his left arm bangs into the brick wall. And he was holding his left wrist when he came back.
Now Tyler Houston. His pass ball in the third allowed the game's only run so far to score. He's 0 for 2 at the plate. Maddox is only now approaching 80 pitches thrown. He threw nine complete games this year. Five of them were shutouts. You mentioned he had this period there where he's struggling about four or five starts, which is really not a struggle for a normal pitchers, but it was for him. He was getting the ball up in the strike zone. One and two. And he just did not have his normal control. And he is a control pitcher. He doesn't have the stuff that he can like he can throw in the middle of the plate and still get hitters out. He has to spot the ball which he does so well. Pumping in two and two. When you look at his ERAs over the last five six years they're impressive enough in and of themselves but when you compare them to the league ERA because scoring is up so dramatically in the 90s it's startling and he gets Houston working a one two three seven the Cubs are down to six outs trailing Maddox one nothing NBC's coverage of tonight's division series game is brought to you by Toyota every day belongs to you make it count by Campbell's Chunky, soup that eats like a meal. By AT&T, it's all within your reach. And by Reebok, creating possibilities one athlete at a time. The MetLife blimp, Snoopy One, under the command of Captains Brian Comer and Charlie Graham. And we thank them for their assistance in covering tonight's game from Wrigley Field. Let's quickly go to Jim Gray. Well, we're here with Scotty Pippen. We just saw about Scotty singing. Were you a little nervous with that rendition of Take Me Out to the Ballpark? No, I wasn't. You know, I probably just learned the words over the last couple of days, but I wasn't nervous at all. Yeah, I, I knew most of the words, and I just kind of wanted to come out and make it a fun thing. Lockhart gets a base hit. He's on first. We found out about your voice. What about your back? You had back surgery. How are you feeling? Well, it's done great. I mean, it's it's been uh, perfectly uh, fine. You know, since the surgery, I've really recovered very well. I think I'm ahead of schedule, and I'm pretty much where I want to be. Assuming that at some point this situation with the NBA and its players will be worked out, do you see any circumstance in which you would return here to Chicago? Given this reception, it would seem awfully difficult for you to leave. Well, yeah, it's been a very difficult question being sitting in the middle of all these <laughs> Chicago fans. But you know, right now I'm just kind of leaving myself open. You know, I, I do see the opportunity of returning to Chicago, but you do to sit here and say that I am coming back to Chicago and to say that is my number one option. You know, I, I would be telling a lie. I'm going to be you know looking elsewhere and that's pretty much you know the position that I put myself in and I'm happy to be in that position. Nothing etched in stone though. The options open to return here. Yeah the options are definitely open. You know I, I look forward to just going somewhere and playing and being competitive and being able to win. Chipper Jones at the plate Lockhart at first. If you speak have you spoken to Michael Jordan over the summer. Might you know his plans and, and his thoughts. Well not really. I mean we don't talk about basketball. I mean the season is over for us right now. We just hoping that the lockout is uh resolved to some degree but you know uh, our thing is that we're going to make our decision when everything is settled. If you make your decision seemingly positive however here in Chicago that would seem to indicate that that would make things at least a little bit easier for Michael to come back would you agree. Well I mean Michael's still one of the best players in the game so I mean losing one of his teammates I don't think that would be a any dramatic change to his his game but you know I, I've enjoyed my career playing with Michael I'm sure he's uh, enjoyed the same so uh, you know. If the opportunity presents itself for us to come back here then you know maybe we'll look at it. You think he would like to return if it's possible. I, I think he just opened all av avenues right now. I mean I'm sure he's leaning more towards leaving the game you know due to the fact that I have opportunity to go look elsewhere but you know we're going to leave his decision up to him when the time comes. Scotty we're going to let you enjoy the baseball game. We enjoyed your singing. We enjoyed covering you. And we look forward to next season wherever it may be. Hi Jim thanks. All right back to you Bob. Jim thanks to you and to Scotty. Bill Regan, the pitching coach, paid a visit to the mound. Mulholland has now fallen behind Chipper Jones 3-0. Lockhart's bounder up the middle was the first hit off Mulholland. This is his third inning of work in relief of Kerry Wood. He walks Jones on four pitches. Beck is warming in the bullpen. 
Galarraga's coming up with Gerald Williams on deck. Riggleman walks toward Gary Darling, the plate umpire, indicating that he's going to pull a double switch here. Beck's going to come out of the bullpen. The pitcher's spot is due second in the bottom half of the eighth. And we'll sort out all the maneuvers when we come back to Wrigley Field. Double switch by Riggleman. Sandy Martinez, the new catcher. Rod Beck, the new pitcher. Galarraga, the hitter. Two on, nobody out. And a swinging strike one. Martinez will hit in the ninth spot, bringing him up second in the bottom half of the inning. Tyler Houston, the starting catcher, made the last out in the bottom of the seventh. So Beck will hit in his slot seventh in the order. A ball and a strike. Tell you what, Rod Beck was a guy that they leaned on heavily down the stretch, and he came through for them. Up high. The last game he pitched against the Giants in the playoff game, the last inning, I should say. I mean, he was on fumes. He couldn't get his fastball above 80 miles an hour. Into center field, Lance Johnson started back. Now comes in a bit to take it. So Galarraga is disposed of. Tied Hoffman for the save lead at 51. And Rod Beck just took the ball every time they gave it to him, Bob, and didn't complain and went out there. I mean, he is a true warrior. I mean, he doesn't have overpowering stuff like Hoffman has, so he has to work for his saves. Cheryl Williams for his first at bat. Important reserve for Bobby Cox. Good fielder. Dangerous bat. Hit 305 with 10 homers, as you saw. This Atlanta team is so good that people almost take them for granted. And with everything else that happened in baseball, McGuire, Sosa, Kerry Wood, and the Yankees with 114 wins. Left field well hit. Rodriguez on the run, leaping it's over his head. A run will score. Here's the throw to the plate, and it's late. It gets by Beck backing up. The other runners move up to second and third. The runners originally held because they thought the ball might be caught. And Williams actually was going to be held to a long single. Well, this ball is hit like a shot. But remember we talked about Rodriguez having a bad ankle. You can see... He's going after it gingerly and he just kind of waves at it. I'm not so sure that he didn't misjudge it as well. Lockhart coming in. They had a play at the plate on him, but he's able to slide across with the second run. And as the ball gets away, the runners move up. Now with first base open, they'll walk Andrew Jones intentionally. So now they've given Maddox at least an insurance run. The ball hit by Williams is scored a single. Then an error on the throw that allows the runners to move up. Williams gets an RBI on the hit. So here's an Atlanta team that won 106 this year. Pretty much slipped in under the radar with the Yankees winning 114 and all the other exploits by individuals around baseball. They're on the verge of sweeping the division series for the third straight year. And if they do it, they'll await the winner of the Astros Padres series.
Andrew Jones. Walk to be placed on first, bringing up Eddie Perez. And Perez on the first pitch just about busts the game open by taking Beck out of the park for a grand slam home run. Devastating blow to the Chicago Cubs. I actually think the wind helped him a little bit on that ball. I'm not sure that it would have, it probably would have gone out anyway because he put a charge into it, but the wind seems to be blowing that way a little bit now. Well, let's take a look at this pitch from back to Perez. It's a slider and it stays up. And Perez puts a charge into it. Five runs home in the inning. Six nothing Atlanta. So after a season as a workhorse perhaps Beck just has nothing left. I don't I think that's more the case than anything else Bob. That was a slider. It wasn't as bad a pitch as I originally thought, but still it was up a little bit, and Perez really tagged it. The Braves have now outscored the Cubs in the series 15 to 2. And Bautista whacks one to left. Rodriguez retreating. This one up against the fence. Bautista sprinting for second. And he'll hold there. So it all falls apart for the Cubs in the eighth. It was 1-0 coming into this inning. Another look at the Bautista hit. Fastball inside. He was trying to get it away over the inside part of the plate. Rodriguez doesn't have a chance at this when it hits off the top of the wall and bounces back toward the infield Lance Johnson over quickly to pick it up Lockhart singled Jones walked after Galarraga flied out Gerald Williams delivered an RBI hit Jones was walked intentionally to load the bases Eddie Perez unloaded them with a grand slam home run that made it six to nothing. Bautista follows with a double. Regan visits the mound. But Beck will continue. And Maddox now finds himself in a laugher. Fouls it off. Well, he mentioned that they used Beck a lot down the stretch. And he came through for them, but here he just cannot reach back and get any more. I mean, he. He was able to close out the inning for him to get into the playoffs, but I think he's just run completely out of gas. One and one. So anticipating all the maneuvers in the eighth and ninth inning of a one nothing game with Maddox on the mound. That's all gone up in smoke. One and two. Back to Beck, he knocks it down, finds it, throws Maddox out. Well, we talked about Maddox being a pretty good hitter. He puts the ball in play. Splitter hits back, it back hits off the heel of his glove. Beck chases it down, and he has plenty of time to get Greg Maddox at first base. This is one of the marks of a team that wins 106. Depth. Right. Look what happened in this inning. Gerald Williams and Danny Bautista, who came in for defense, each delivered big hits. And Eddie Perez, who is their second catcher, although he's the regular catcher when Maddox works, hits a home run, a grand slam home run. These are not their marquee guys. But just like the Yankees are able to bring 
fresh troops off the bench and fresh troops out of the bullpen. That's how you win 114 or 106. Yeah. It's not just the superstars. Depth is the reason you can win over 100 ball games. Weiss is the ninth man to bat in the inning. Beck's 1 1 pitch. Two balls and a strike. The Braves swept the Mets in the final weekend of the regular season to knock them out on the verge of sweeping the Cubs to knock them out of the playoffs. Foul ball. Suddenly Wrigley Field falls very quiet. But one thing I've noticed in the fans are not leaving. They're sticking around because I think they're going to even if the Cubs aren't able to come back I think they want to give them one last salute and I think they deserve that. Pop up. Grace is under it. Nine men bat. Five of them score. Six nothing Atlanta. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Look at this graphic on Eddie Perez and this is why Bobby Cox feels that whenever he takes Javi Lopez out he's not losing all of his offense. Excellent with the bases loaded. And Jose Hernandez starts the bottom of the eighth with a single. Well, one thing you know is going to happen is Greg Maddox is going to make you hit the ball, especially with a six to nothing lead. Starts him off with a fastball, and Hernandez hits it back through the middle for a base hit. He's going to make you swing the bat. You're not going to get anything from Greg Maddox free with this six to nothing lead. Sandy Martinez, his first at bat, he cuts and misses. That was the fifth hit surrendered by Maddox. Martinez in the ball game on this is 26th birthday. One and one. Leitenberg. And John Rocker. Just in case Maddox doesn't finish this one. Another bouncer up the middle, and it gets by the lunging Lockhart. So the Cub 8 starts with back to back singles. Well, this ball goes right back through the middle. Maddox gets the ground ball, but it's hit right up the middle and there you see Lockhart trying to cut it off he can't get there in time now Lance Johnson at the top of the order he's 0 for 3 To him from Maddox. Well, if you're the Cubs, you say, hey, I'm down six runs, but I have two innings to do it. I don't have to get them all back right here. If I can get two or three runs here and then make a charge in the ninth, I still have a chance. One and one the count. And it begins to look as if there will be only one game on television tomorrow, and it will be on Fox. Game four of the Astros and Padres. That would change if the Cubs rally here and Johnson does his part by dropping one into right. One base at a time bases loaded nobody out. Oh. 
A good job by the Cubs here to get themselves back in this ball game. At least give themselves a chance to get back in the ball game. Lance Johnson rips a single to right field, and now they have the bases loaded. And then again, everyone should not go up there trying to hit the ball out of the ballpark. They need base runners. Bobby Cox to the mound now with Morandini at the plate and Sosa on deck. I know it may sound strange, but a guy like Maddox, when he has a one to nothing lead, he, every pitch is important and he never loses his focus. I really believe that sometimes when you get a big lead after you've worked so hard, you do lose your focus. So Maddox is done working seven innings plus and leading six nothing. When you take pitches that they usually get you out on, break them balls away and go the other way, then what do they do? Try to come inside and then you get a chance to go deep. That was a big hit right there to give us a lift. That's our team right there. We never quit. Tom Gamboa, the Cubs third base coach, talking with Jose Hernandez. Kerry Leitenberg in with the bases loaded and nobody out. Ball one to Morandini. And Morandini should be patient here. One of the things that Leitenberg has had problem with is th throwing strikes when he first comes into the ball game. Morandini fouls it to the seats. Sammy next. The 1-1 one, one pitch. 2-1. and one. With Mark Wallers losing it, at least for this year, Leitenberg, technically still a rookie, though he came up toward the end of 97, saved 30 games out of Bobby Cox's bullpen. Right field. Backing up is Gerald Williams. Not quite to the track. He makes the catch. Hernandez tags. The throw comes to the middle of the diamond. Hernandez scores. Sandy Martinez moves from second to third. Johnson holds first. So it's six to one. Well, that's a low pitch. Even though Morandini gets in the air, it probably was a ball. It was down, a good sinker. He gets it in the air. Gerald Williams. Makes the catch and Hernandez scores the first run of the ball game for the Cubs. Martinez at third. Johnson at first. Sosa maybe for his last at bat of 1998. But if he can go deep here, the Cubs are back in it. Two and oh. Well, he's showing more patience here against Leitenberg than he did against Maddox. The ageless Dennis Martinez and the young lefty John Rocker. Fouls the 2-0 pitch to the seats. Well, when you hit 66, they come <laughs> in all varieties. <laughs> Here's the 2-1. The Cubs' biggest comeback of the year was from eight runs down. Against the Brewers in September, they trailed 10 to 2 and they won 15 to 12. But that's against the Brewer pitching staff, not the Braves. Another foul ball.
Again on two and two. Struck Sammy out. And that's something Sammy was not doing in the middle of the season when he was hot. He was not chasing that slider off the plate. Well, he takes a fastball low for a ball. Outside for ball two. He gets a fastball that he just misses. Fouls another one out of play. And the, then he chases the slider off the plate. Good pitching by Leidenberg. He kept everything down. Sammy 0 for 4 tonight. 2 for 11 in the series. About the mental strain of chasing Maris, Ruth, and McGuire. I mean, it just takes its toll on you. I mean, I was surprised that the pressure didn't get to him McGuire sooner. A ball and a strike to Grace. Oh for 11 against Atlanta in these three games. Johnson breaks from first and Grace fouls it back. Well they're not holding him on at first base. They're playing way behind him. Andres Galarraga not even thinking about Johnson. So he takes off. And I think that's a good play. If you're not holding you on just take off. This time he's not going and Grace just serves one into shallow left and it drops for his first hit of the series. Making it six to two as Martinez trots across. Uh, you called it correctly just kind of serves this one in the left field that pitch is down and away you can see that's a ball he just kind of flips it to left field for a base hit it may sound strange but if Johnson would have stolen that base sooner he would have been able to score on that ball too because with two outs he would have been able to break right away Leitenberg to Rodriguez ball one and O. Henry is definitely capable of putting the Cubs three runs closer Johnson at second Grace at first two out and two in in the bottom of the eighth. He was going for the three run homer. But at this point I mean players will tell you they don't swing for home runs and most of the time you shouldn't. But he's in a position right here he does, he's not running well. So he should just let it go. One one pitch. One and two. This is not a good swing. He had a fine swing on the pitch before. This one he just kind of waves at. You can see he's pulling away and the ball runs away. Just off the corner. 27 year old Kerry Leitenberg trying to put out the fire for Bobby Cox and the Braves here in the eighth. Center field, Andrew Jones scarcely has to move. They score two, but they leave two. And with one more time at bat left, they trail by four. NBC's coverage of tonight's Division Series game is brought to you by MasterCard, official card of Major League Baseball and fan of the great American pastime. By American Airlines, something special in the air. By New Ocean Spray. Go out there, he's your closer and he hasn't pitched well today. And a little number, Beck off the mound. Now he lets it go and there's no play. I don't know if Gaetti charging from third would have had a chance to get Lockhart but he probably had a better chance than Beck. Well Gaetti started Beck started Beck Gaetti thinks Beck is going to take it, and then Beck runs off and no play for Gaetti. 
Infield hit for Lockhart, who's now two for five. Chipper Jones, one for two with a couple of walks. If the Braves win tonight, it's their 10th win in a row, dating back to the end of the regular season. And their third consecutive sweep of the first round series under the new playoff format. One and one. two strikes to Chipper prior to the series in Atlanta a newspaper column referred to the Cubs as a virtual buy for the Braves in the first round that annoyed the Chicago players and the Atlanta players quickly disavowed it they said that's not us talking that's somebody else's opinion yeah I mean Chipper Jones said it was the media not the players thinking that way and I'm sure the players did not think that way Up and in, and Chipper turns away. Two and two. Well, they won the first game seven to one behind John Smoltz with Klesko hitting the grand slam and Tucker also homering. Tapani almost beat the Braves in game two, took a one nothing lead into the ninth before Lopez homered to tie it. Atlanta won it in the tenth. This one was close until the eighth when Atlanta scored five times. Left center field, Rodriguez and Johnson converge, and it's Henry for the catch. The MetLife blimps are in their 11th year of providing aerial coverage of sporting events and television specials throughout the United States. Combined, the blimps, Snoopy 1 and Snoopy 2, have traveled over 700,000 miles since the program began, and they've done it at very slow speeds. <laughs> Those are real miles when you travel at that clip. Galarraga is hitless tonight. 0 for 3 with a walk. If the Braves win in the next round, underline if several times because either the Padres or Astros will be tough, they'll have a World Series rematch with either the Indians or the Yankees. Time was called. They beat the Indians in 1995 in the Fall Classic, lost to the Yankees in 96. Cleveland and New York is your ALCS matchup. One oh pitch right center field Johnson comes over along with Sammy and the ball drops. There's a little confusion there. I, I'm not sure if, if either could have caught it but they both kind of hesitated out there and the ball dropped in. When the ball is first hit in the right center field, it appeared that it was going to hang up. And there you see Johnson slowing up, and then Sosa has to take it on the hop. So now Gerald Williams, he came into the game for defense, but it was his long single in the eighth that made it 2 nothing, gave Maddox a bit of breathing room, after which they walked Andrew Jones intentionally, and Eddie Perez on the first pitch from Rod Beck took a slider out of the park for a grand slam home run. That made it six nothing. Cubs came back with two in their half. Atlanta leads six two top of the ninth. One and one. An infield single by Lockhart, a soft single to right by Galarraga, and the Braves threatening to add to their lead here in the ninth inning. Two and two.
ripped foul. Another 2-2 pitch, and another foul ball. Scheduled hitters in the bottom of the ninth. Gaetti, Beck, who will be hit for, obviously. Hernandez, and then Martinez. Again on two and two. Got him looking. Good fastball from Rod back over the outside corner. Fastball right on the outside corner. Good pitch. Now it's Andrew Jones. 0 for 2 with a couple of walks. Strike one. You couldn't argue with the strategy of walking him intentionally back in the eighth. No, because it set up a double play for one thing. Yeah, there's only one out, second and third. They loaded the bases, set up the double play. But Perez foiled that strategy. And you're walking a guy that had 31 home runs during the season to get to a guy that hit six home runs. What's and a catcher that doesn't run well when you have a speedy runner in Andrew Jones. What's logical sometimes becomes lamentable, <laughs> as it did for the Cubs. Two balls and a strike. Three and one. You know, it was enlightening in talking to Jim Riggleman today, Bob, is that he wasn't claiming success because the Cubs were a wild card team. He said they still have a lot of work to go to do. And uh, he said they're going to get the started on it right away. So I thought that was enlightening in the fact that a lot of people are just happy to get to the playoffs. Full count to Jones. Well, even. If they're ushered out of the playoffs tonight, they have to be encouraged by the outing from Kerry Wood. And unlike a lot of people who in Chicago, they felt that they shouldn't start Kerry Wood tonight. I actually agree that they should start him just to find out themselves where he stands. And it's good for Kerry to know where he stands going into the winter, into the offseason. Lockhart and Galarraga will be running the 3 2 pitch with two outs. Base is loaded. And that brings up Eddie Perez once again with the bases loaded. That graphic we had up a while back might be worth another look. Riggleman may have seen enough. Well, I'm surprised that Beck was back out there to start this inning. I mean, he's been your workhorse all year, and he's gotten knocked around. He didn't have much left. Mike Morgan is the new Cub pitcher. Perez again with the bases loaded. First pitch, ball one. Morgan will be 39 in a few days. Made his major league debut 20 years ago with Oakland. This is his second tour of duty with the Cubs. He's been with nine different big league teams. Two and oh. And Eddie Perez specializes in this situation. I'll right. say. Yeah. And he's in a favorable count to the hitter. Two balls and no strikes. He smacks one toward the hole, but Gaetti comes up with it, and with the flip to Morandini, he ends the inning. Nice play by the veteran. The Braves leave him loaded and take a 6-2 lead to the bottom of the ninth. 
NBC's coverage of tonight's Division Series game is brought to you by MasterCard, official card of Major League Baseball and fan of the great American pastime. By American Airlines, something special in the air. By New Ocean Spray, Well Fleet Farms, Cranberry and Granny Smith Apple, we only pick the best fruit. And by KFC, home of new popcorn chicken. At KFC, we do chicken right. Strike one the count to Gaetti as we start the bottom of the ninth. Leitensburg's pitch is lifted foul and into the seats. They'd have to rally big time for Sammy to get another swing in 1998. Down 6-2. Ball one. High pop-up, right side of the infield, Lockhart and Galarraga, and it's the big cat to take it for the first out of the ninth. Pitcher spot due. They don't have any more left-handed bats left on the bench, having already used Martinez and Brant Brown. So they go with the infielder, Manny Alexander. Jose Hernandez is on deck. Bob, you have Leidenberg trying to get some rhythm going into the LCS because he has struggled a little bit down the stretch with his control, and I think that's the biggest concern that the Atlanta Braves have now going into the LCS is how their bullpen is going to hold up which has been a question mark the entire season for them. The kid from Rapid City, South Dakota, Leitenberg, has become their closer. And as we mentioned, saved 30 this year. A ball and two strikes. If it ends here for the Cubs, it's still been a memorable season. Yes. The deaths of the beloved broadcasters Harry Carey and Jack Brickhouse, the remarkable season of Sammy Sosa, the emergence of Kerry Wood. Lockhart short hops the ball hit by Alexander and throws him out. Chicago down to its last out of the season. Another good year for Mark Grace, a return to the playoffs for the first time since 1989. But still it appears no World Series appearance dating back to 1945. No World Series victory since 1908. Hernandez swings and misses. The sentimental favorites, the traditional teams with the great old ballparks, the two wildcard teams this year, the Red Sox and the Cubs, apparently will be sent packing today. Looks like this will do it. Andrew Jones calls. The Braves sweep the Cubs. It's not a wild celebration for these Atlanta Braves. A happy bunch to be sure. But this is what they came to do, what they expected to do. Winners of 106. Meanwhile, they come to their feet at Wrigley Field. Polite applause perhaps for the Braves, but mostly it's an ovation of appreciation for the Chicago club and what they did this year. And I think they deserve the tip of the hat from the Cubs fans. They've given them a lot of excitement this year and a lot of things to cheer for, and especially the 66 home runs that Sammy Sosa contributed. And as you mentioned, Kerry Woods, a new pitcher on the scene and they have a lot of things to look forward to next year. Meanwhile the Braves look forward to either the Padres or the Astros. That series is tied at a game apiece. They play tonight in San Diego. Kevin Brown against Mike Hampton. 
the unusual scheduling in that series, allowing the Padres to go with Brown twice in three games. Maddox is the Chevrolet player of the game. He worked seven innings, allowed seven hits, actually faced three batters in the eighth, and was charged with two runs after his departure. He didn't walk anybody. He struck out four. He had a double and scored the game's first run in the third inning. We go down to Jim Gray. All right, congratulations as the Braves are walking in here. Greg Maddox, MVP of the game. Greg, the pitching dominance in this series. How did you guys manage to shut down Mark Grace and Sammy Sosa and be so dominant out there? I don't know. Uh, way to go. Way to go, yo, gang. Super. Andrew, <laughs> subdued celebration. How did you manage to shut them down? You know, well, tonight, you know, they hit a couple balls in the wind. I know Gracie hit a ball good. They got stuck in the wind tonight. And, uh, you know, we defensed them pretty good. Uh, you know, good pitching a lot of times does be good hitting. And uh, we pitched them good and, you know, came away with it. Is this what's expected? I mean, you now have swept three straight series in the divisional. Is this all becoming common and expected of the Braves? We expect to win, yeah. We do. We expect to win. Good job, buddy. Good job. Ryan Glasgow, there's a little bit of champagne going on in here. Uh, let me ask you finally, uh, you guys struggled against Houston this year, four and five. Against San Diego, you were five and four. <laughs> Greg, do you have a preference of who you would play? No, we're just, we're just glad we're going. We're glad we're going. And uh, Andres Galarraga. Well, it's starting to get wild in here. Let's go back out to Bob Costas. You know, Jim Gray is going to learn after he works <laughs> enough of those locker rooms not to wear the nice threads when somebody <laughs> clinches. Meanwhile, as the Braves are celebrating, all the Cubs come back out onto the field and they return the salute they're receiving from their fans. Sammy Sosa, a year for the ages. A year that stacks up with any that almost any Hall of Famer has ever had. And it ends for him here at Wrigley Field tonight. Once again, the final score, Braves 6, Cubs 2. Be sure to join us on Tuesday night for Game 1 of the ALCS. Coming up tonight, it's Saturday Night Live. Hosting tonight is NBC's Frazier, Kelsey Grammer, along with musical guest Cheryl Crow and the NBA's Shaquille O'Neal. That's tonight, following your late local news. For Joe Morgan and Jim Gray, I'm Bob Costas saying so long from Chicago. Now, for those of you in the Eastern and Central Time Zones, stay tuned for an episode of Working. We'll see you at 8 Eastern Time on Tuesday for Game 1 of the Indians and the Yankees in the ALCS. Good night from Chicago. Woo! <laughs>